Hey everybody and welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome to this channel. I'm David Townsend. This is The Net Academy where we are learning networks together. And on this video, what I'm going to be going through is, and as part of the Appstra series, is I'm going to be focusing on how to download, install, and initially set up the Appstra operating, operating system or AOS on the EVENG environment. Now, honestly, I wasn't going to do this because I, I've done a few videos already on what is Appstra from Juniper Networks, what is intent-based networking on Appstra from Juniper Networks. Full disclosure, as always, I work at Juniper Networks. And then I was going to go into the user interface and how to configure and set up and deploy a data center network. But then I realized actually there's a big gap missing here, and that is how to and where do you download the Appstra OS image and how do you install that into the EVNG environment and then how do you set it up in the EVNG environment and that is the purpose of this video none of the user interface on Appstra just yet that's for the later video or maybe even the next video here it's all about where to go to to find that Appstra operating system how to download it which is very straightforward where do you find the EVNG documentation to install, set up that AOS image? And then we'll go through all of those processes and literally walk through and talk through how to actually do that. So stay tuned. This is going to be an informative video. But for now, let's actually just get going with where to find the Appstra image. Okay, so the first step in this process is actually locating the Appstra Operating System Image, or AOS. To do that, depending on your browser of choice, I use Google or Chrome, but this doesn't really matter. Just, and as I do, select Juniper Download, search for it. You've got the Juniper Downloads page. Select this, now you will need an account. If you don't have one, you will need to create an account. So under the Downloads part, all you have to do is Enter in Appstra, it will just auto populate to Juniper Appstra. And if you scroll down, you can see Appstra Fabric Conductor. That's what you want. And you've got all the versions that you can download. Obviously, it's best to go with the latest version. Version 5 is really good. It's got the latest features, such as the AI Ops, as well as the Flow Telemetry. And it's cleaned up the user interface. So I quite like version 5. This is what we're going to download and use. Uh, and if you scroll further down, you've got the three different images depending on your operating environment. So I'm using a Linux bare metal server. So I'm going to use the virtual machine image for Linux KVM. But obviously, if you've got an ESXi or Hyper-V hypervisor, you'd need to select VMware or Microsoft respectively. And underneath here, you've got your application tools. So you can download the cloud services edge. You've got the automation tools. You've got flow image for the flow telemetry. So there's a lot. But obviously, I'm going to select the Linux KVM. You just select this. If you've got an account, agree to the T's and C's as always, which no one ever reads, and just download it. Obviously, I've already downloaded it. And that's really step one, downloading the image. That's the easiest part. Step two is following the EVNG documentation. So this is the EVNG homepage. It's very easy to use and fair play to the guys at EVNG for this to install Appstra into your EVNG environment under documentation. It's a bit hard to read because it's a black grayish background with blue writing, so the, the contrast isn't very good. But under how to create images, you've got all the different vendors and all the different products. We'll skip past Aruba, we'll skip by Cisco, we'll skip by Dell, we'll get to Juniper. And here is the Juniper Appstra server or Juniper AOS server. Now, don't worry about the version number. We're going to actually download and install version 5. But you can see here it's referencing version 4. Don't worry about that. In fairness to the guys at EVNG, they can't possibly update every documentation for every product from every vendor for every new version. It's not doable. So don't worry about the version, but do follow the documentation. And you can see step 1 in this particular step is downloading that image which I've already done. Step two is actually creating a directory under opt unit lab add-ons qmu and with this particular directory 
reference this directory name. Now do reference it as AOS. Don't call it Appstra. Don't call it Juniper Appstra. You have to go enter in AOS. And that is because there's YAML files in a particular directory in EVENG which cross references this directory name and they have to match. The version number can be different and obviously I recommend that it matches the version you're using and that you've downloaded but it does have to start with AOS in this particular case. So that's what we need to do and we need to then under step 3 upload or transfer this image over to that particular directory. So I'm going to use FileZilla for this and here is my file Zilla. So I'm just going to go into the server 102.168.100.105 root. Very strong two letter password. And it's just connect. And let's go into that directory. So it was under opt right at the bottom unit lab add ons QMU. And now here's the directory that I actually created that I've already created iOS 5.0.0. And in this particular directory we need to transfer over that AOS server image that QCAL2 file that we've already downloaded so I'm just going to transfer that over and that's it that took about 30 to 40 seconds but here's that QCAL2 file in my bare metal server obviously depending on if you need to transfer this image over from your laptop presumably your laptop over to another server you may have to do this well you will have to do this but if your EVENG environment is on your laptop that you've got the image downloaded to, you can skip this part, of course. But now it's transferred over. And we could go back to the EVENG documentation and it's telling me under step four, I need to go into that directory I just created and I need to move that AOS server image, that QCAL2 file, into that same directory, but we need to rename it as a V-I-R-T-I-O-A QCAL2 file. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's, it's too strong a word for me. But that's what we're going to do now. So here is my secure CRT. In fact, if I just put this on the left so you can see it. And I've got my secure CRT on the right. Let's go into my bare metal server. There we go there. And let's go into that particular directory. Opt unit lab. Add-ons QMU. Let's show... And there's the AOS version 5. This to show we've got that file there that we've downloaded and just transferred over. And now I need to run step 4 command of moving the AOS server image into a this word here, QCAL2. And let's do a list show. And there it is there. Under step 5, the final step in this step 2 process is now fixing those permissions. To do that, it's very easy. Opt, unit lab, wrappers. You could tab it out, UNL underscore wrapper, hyphen A, fix permissions. And this will take about 10 to 15 seconds. And there we go. That is step five done in this step two process. And note the default log login for Appstra at the end is admin for the username and admin as the password. But that's step two really done. We've downloaded the image in, in step one. And in step two, we've installed Appstra into the EVENG environment. Step three is all about booting up and doing the initial configuration on that Appstra server. And here we are. We're now on the EVENG environment on my bare metal server. This is step three, booting up and configuring initially the Appstra so that it can eventually build, deploy, manage and ensure this data center that you see here. That's not the focus of this video, obviously, in terms of building, managing, deploying and ensuring the data center. That's for many later videos that are to, that are to come. Right now, we've just downloaded the image. We've installed the image into EVNG, but now we need to set up AOS for initial network connectivity. So I'm just going to right click and under node. We've got all the images, obviously this might change from one e EVNG environment to another, but here's the Aperture AOS server. And you can see all the different versions. Here's AOS version five. That's the one that we want. Just hit save. And there you go on the right hand side. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to build a network. The network being it's gonna bridge the physical interface on my bare metal server. This is how I understand it to my network. It's just for management. 
So I'm just going to give it a different little icon here. So I like the blue cloud and I'm just going to connect AOS to that network. And AOS, the virtual image only has one virtual interface. So you cannot connect regardless of the amount of spines and leaves and access switches, etc., etc. You cannot connect all of them to AOS. You've got, you've got to connect them all to this network where Aperture is actually connected to and it's just bridging across. So for now, we've got our Aperture actually here. It's connected to the virtual network and let's now start this and you can see it's just about flashing blue and off and blue and off. Click left on it and it will bring up the pop-up display and it will go through its initial boot up sequence. Now this will take a few minutes, just bear with it, let it get through its actual process of starting up all the Docker containers and, and whatever else. And towards the end, you'll know when it's finished because it will ask you for your username, which is admin by default. And then the password by default is admin as well. And there you go, that didn't take too long actually. So the, here is the login. So I'm just gonna do admin. Default password is also admin. It's now going to ask you to change the current password because it's very weak, isn't it? Um, so the current password is again admin, entering a new password. Please remember it, otherwise you will have to reset this and type it in again. Ah, it didn't match, so I need to do that again. And there we go, second time lucky. So now it's going to ask you, do you want to set the Aperture user interface password? Yes, because again, the default password is admin. It's not very strong. So you can have this different to the password we just set. The difference being, this is the password for the user interface you access via a web browser. The password, password we just set is the root password to get into the command line interface. Now I'm going to keep them both the same. Just for simplicity, it's got obviously a set of criteria that you have to meet. Now I'm just entering in my password. And again, you have to confirm it. And you can now see it's changed it successfully. Now I don't use all of these parts, all the four parts, the login credentials, the web UI credentials. I've never even gone into that to be honest. What I do use mostly is the network and sometimes I turn on and off the Appstra server or the Appstra service. Under network, using the up and down arrows and the, the enter key, select network. Now depending on your environment, if you're happy with a DHCP assigned IP address, then fine, leave it to DHCP. In my case, I need manual, so I'll just hit down, hit space, do not hit return, hit the space key, and you can now select manual. The reason why I want manual is because I want this server to have a static IP address that I know is constant and is not going to change, and I don't have to keep checking what the IP address is every day or so, so it's, it's just easier for me to have a static IP address. So I select it to manual, hit enter, and you can now see here is the DHCP address, the 192.168.100.50. I'm gonna change this to 101. The gateway is a 192.168.100.1. Obviously this will change for your own network, but this is just how mine is actually set up. I then have my DNS, primary DNS, secondary DNS, good old Google, no domain, gives you a quick summary at the end, hit yes. It's now going to ask you for that root password, not the UI password, but the root password we initially configured when we first got into this uh, root CLI. And with that now entered, it's now going to ask, do you want to restart the network service? Absolutely restart it, because then those new network credentials will kick into effect, will come into place. And you can now see it's applying the new network settings. It's gonna stop the Aperture service, then it's gonna restart a Docker container and then start the Aperture service again. And then it should have that new manual or static IP address of 192.168.100.101. That's it, it's now successfully configured. I shouldn't need to do anything else at this point, so I'm just gonna close this off. Now to get onto the Aperture user interface, I'm just going to start a new tab on my Google Chrome, I'm going to enter in 192.168.100.101. That is the static IP that we just configured. Hit enter. And it might ask you if you want to accept this web page, of course. But here I enter in admin. Of course, you can 
enter in, you can create additional users with their own passwords when you get into the user interface. But this is the initial setup. And now I ent enter in that password that we created for the user interface. And that's it. That is step three complete. For me, that's the hardest stage, but it's actually very straightforward. And that's it, everybody. That is the end of this part. That is the end of this video in this Appstra series. And what we've gone through in summary in this video is how to install and do the initial setup of Juniper Appstra, the AOS server, on an EVNG environment. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got EVNG Community or EVNG Pro, it will work exactly the same. Step one on the Juniper Downloads page, download the Juniper Appstra AOS server. Step two, transfer it across to your server if you need to, but follow that EVNG documentation. Make sure you get the wording right, especially on the name of that directory, fix the permissions, and then step three, when you've done a page refresh of the EVNG, start up your AOS server, let it boot up, and then go through the initial network configuration to find it. Do you want a static IP address? Do you want a DHCP IP address? And of course, resetting and changing those passwords before actually going onto a web browser and verifying that you have connectivity. So three steps really, quick, easy. Hope you found that useful. Hope you found that informative. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments box. I love hearing from you all. Other than that, thanks for watching and goodbye.